Hello again. It's good to be back with you. Today I'd like to talk about a dynamics problem, and that's the acceleration of a bar that's pinned on one end and allowed to rotate on the other. I've got a, I've actually got a bar here. This is actually a uh, uh, straight edge I use. But what I've got here is I've got a hole on this end. I'm going to stick my finger through there, and I'm going to make that a pivot. And I'm going to hold it at this end, all right? When I let go, the bar drops, okay? Obviously drops under the acceleration of gravity. Just let it go, and there it goes. All right, now I'm going to assume that this end here, my, 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 my hand where my finger goes through is pinned. It's not moving, and there's very, very little friction here. So I'm going to see if I can hold this. There's what I'm looking for. Now, I didn't quite get my hand still there, but you get the idea. All right, so here's what it looks like in the ideal. I've got a bar here pinned on the left end, and there's a little string here maybe on the right end. Okay. That's a little piece of string right there, and that, that pivot right there is assumed to be frictionless. Really, really good bearings, okay? So when I, when I cut that string, at the instant I cut the string, what's the acceleration? So we're given that. Find initial alpha, alpha being rotational acceleration. Because this thing is pinned on the, on the left end here, it's going to rotate, and this end's going to fall. But if I know what the rotational acceleration is, I know what everything along the, what, what all the points on the beam are going to do. So there's given fine. The next thing is solution. OK. Well, how do we solve this? What's the first thing we always do when we go to solve these things? We're going to draw a free body diagram. All right? I'm going to draw a real simple one here. Free body diagram just. Uh, shows the body that's moving and then all the external forces that are acting on it. So I've got weight there, or all the forces that are acting on it. And I'm going to have that be the reaction force in the y direction and the reaction force in the x direction, because I didn't draw that pivot. Now, I took that out. I've got to have those two forces. I've got to make sure those are still accounted for. And just to keep the bookkeeping clean here, there's the positive sign convention. That's the coordinate system I'm using. Oops. And there's a positive moment right there. So positive y, positive x, positive moment. So I've got my free body diagram, and I've got my uh, positive sign convention. Now what? Well, next thing to do is let's write down the governing equation. Now we know that f equals ma. Well, sum of the moments equals i alpha. All right? That's the rotational equivalent of f equals ma. If you want to think of mass as resistance to linear acceleration, I, the mass moment of inertia, is resistance to rotational acceleration. There's a number associated with that. Well, I don't have to put the summation there because there's really only one moment. I'm going to sum the moment about the, the, the pivot point right there. Okay, if I do that, Rx and Ry, Rx and Ry, don't have any moment arm, and so those drop out. I only, the only thing I wind up having to account for is the weight. All right, so let's do that. Well, sum of the moments, okay, this is. Uh, I'm going to just call this length for right now. And so I've got weight acting at half the length. So I've got weight times L over 2. Now, positive or negative? That weight is trying to rotate this uh, bar in the clockwise direction, but I've got counterclockwise listed as positive. So I'll put that up there. Equals I alpha. Well, what's I? We're not going to be able to solve this until we know what I is. Well, for a bar. You can look this up, OK? Right there, i about that endpoint is ml squared over 3. That's if you decide to just look it up. The other way to do this is to note that i about the center, which is right there, the centroid, is ml squared over 12. OK? That's, that gets us part of the way there, but it isn't the right answer because we haven't accounted for the fact that the, uh, we're rotating about an end, not the centroid. So what we have to do is write an extra term, md squared. This is the parallel axis theorem in action here, where distance is the distance between the centroid, where this was calculated, and the actual pivot point. Well, that's going to be, let's see, ml squared over 12 plus mass times l over 2 squared. And if you do all that math, what you'll find out is that works out to ml squared over 3, just like that. So we've got 
two ways to get the mass moment of inertia. We can either just look it up, or we can calculate it from some stuff we know. All right, so let's see. Let's replace that with ML squared over 3 times alpha. All right, well, it looks like we got a few too many unknowns, but we don't really. Weight is mass times the acceleration of gravity, right? right there, so I'm going to replace that. And note, look what cancels out. Mass cancels out. Because you notice, I didn't give you mass. Turns out you don't need it. And the other thing we can cancel out is we can cancel with that L. Okay? And so if we solve for alpha, we're going to get a negative 3 over 2 G over L. All right? We've got the negative sign there. This is going to accelerate in the negative direction according to my sign convention. So the math took care of me there. Last thing I've got to do is put some numbers in. Well, let's see. Let's do this three times, 9.81 meters per second squared. Always, always, always keep your units. Track your units. If you track the units and the units are right, the numbers will pretty much come along from the right. If your units aren't correct, there's no way the numbers are going to be correct. When you decide not to track your units, you're giving up a way of checking your answer, so don't do that. So what I'm going to get here is minus 14.715, 1 over second squared for my units. Hmm. Does that look right? Well, it does, because radians are unitless. Radians are actually, uh, they're like strain. It's, it's a length over length. I've got another video on that, so go back and check that video. I'll show you why radians are unitless. So I got 1 over second squared. I can replace that with radians per second squared and not be violating any, any mathematical or physical rule. So there we go. This was an easy one today, wasn't it? Started out with a bar, pivoted on one end, all right, supported by a string on the other, cut the string, and it starts to fall under the force of gravity. All right. So we did our free body diagram, wrote out the equation of motion, and solved it for alpha. There you go. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.